Now it's time for this hour's news review. Iran's Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian has sat down for talks with Syrian President Bashar al-Assad in Damascus. The two officials discuss ways to further expand bilateral relations. They also exchange views on international and regional developments. Earlier, the Iranian Foreign Minister held talks with his Syrian counterpart Faisal al mehdad after that meeting, Amir Abdullahian said Iran and Syria are designing a roadmap for the expansion of economic cooperation in the face of cruel sanctions by adversaries. During his stay in Damascus, Amir Abdullahian will also hold talks with leaders of the Palestinian resistance groups. I'd like to welcome my guests to the program. Out of Damascus, Press TV's Mohammed Ali, and out of uh, Tehran, Mostafa Khoshchesh, a journalist and a political commentator. Thank you both for being with us. Well, started off with Mohammed Ali. Well, fill us in on what has taken place so far in the Iranian Foreign Minister's visit to Syria. Yes, it seems that it is a very important uh, visit when we look at uh, the statements and what uh, officials uh, in Syria and also Mr. Abdullahian uh, said. It seems that Iran wants to boost its economic relations with Syria in order for both countries to face uh, the uh, challenges and pressures uh, by the West imposed on them. Uh, Mr. Abdullahian, after uh, meeting uh, his Syrian counterpart Faisal al maqdad he said that both countries, Syria and Iran, are working on a roadmap to develop uh, relations between both countries and trade and economic uh, cooperation in order to uh, face uh, the sanctions imposed on, on them. And he also said that both countries regard as very important and crucial uh, cooperation between uh, both countries, economic cooperation, particularly in the private uh, sector. Mr. al maqdad also Syria's uh, foreign minister, said both countries discussed uh, 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 recent developments and also uh, the mutual challenges. It seems very clearly that Mr. Abdullahian also coming from Iraq uh, to Syria. He was perhaps also briefing uh, the Syrian officials on uh, the meetings that happened over there, uh, especially that uh, the meetings that happened in Iraq are very important because they discussed over there uh, uh, cooperation in the region. So it's a very important visit. Uh, again, Iran ex expressed its support to Syria uh, economically. Mustafa, tell me the significance of this visit. And are we looking at a type of transition in the way Iran uh, is looking at the situation with Syria? Uh, meaning, are we looking at increased amount of cooperation between the two countries? Um, your overall assessment. Hello, Nancy. Good evening, and thanks for having me. Thanks true, for that's uh, completely true. Under uh, President Raisi, uh, uh, we are witnessing a uh, uh, different shift in Iran's foreign policy, not just from the past eight years, but also all throughout the past two decades. Uh, since uh, now, uh, President Raisi has a clear agenda uh, for foreign policy uh, aimed at improving Iranian economy, of course. But when it comes to the region, it's pursuing two roads. One is towards allies and friends, uh, especially the resistance front against the, uh, That's why uh, Mr. Abdullah Yan, Amir Abdullah Yan, was picked up as the foreign minister. He's known to have been uh, you know, a, a career diplomat as well as uh, ambassador to uh, several Arab states, as well as uh, a deputy. He, he used to be a deputy foreign minister also for Arab African Affairs, is known to have very close ties with Martyr Lieutenant General Qasem Soleimani, and he knows the Arab world pretty well. The Arab world also knows Amir Abdullah Young pretty well. He is a character, he's a figure very well known in area of diplomacy. And uh, uh, that's why Iran is moving to re-empower uh, its allies, uh, the Palestinian groups, Hezbollah and others, uh, in one way. Another uh, uh, distinguished, uh, I could say, uh, aspect of this new foreign policy is uh, developing win-win situations with friendly states in the resistance front, including uh, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon, in order to complete uh, the axis of resistance, which is now more a political security uh, resistance front, to have different economic aspects as well. As a goal, uh, the ultimate goal is developing the resistant front economic pull. 
And that's a situation that could be brought up. If there is any win-win formula possible, definitely uh, it's been proved that it couldn't be done with the U.S., but it's possible to do so with friends and allies like Saudi, like uh, Syria and Iraq. So Iran is trying to, you know, take the benefit of, uh, you know, uh, the current situation in order to expand uh, trade ties with the members of the resistance front, and that's one part of Iran's regional policy. Well, uh, Mohammed Ali, I was just wondering, uh, in Syria itself, and looking at uh, the Iranian foreign minister, the first trip that he's taken as foreign minister, first to Iraq and then to Syria, um, what type of message does that send to Syria? What is being said on that side of things? Yes, first of all, it's an interpretation to uh, what Mr. Abdul Hayyan uh, said. Actually, he tweeted uh, uh, just a couple of days ago. He said that the priority of Iran, its foreign policy, will be for its neighbors and for Asia. Definitely, it's a very important message uh, uh, from uh, Mr. Abdul Hayyan and from Iran uh, when he visits first Iraq and then Syria, two countries that are members of a resistance from two countries uh, that have uh, fought terrorism for years, uh, of course, with the help and with the support uh, of Iran. This is a resistance front. This is an, an alliance uh, that has been uh, the only successful alliance in fighting terror and in fighting agents and plots made by Western countries, of course, and most importantly, by the United States in the region. So this visit by Mr. Abdullahian to Iraq and Syria as the first visits for him as a foreign minister is a direct message that there, uh, this alliance uh, will continue, it will be stronger, and that those countries will continue to work together uh, in all fields, whether fighting terrorism or uh, building, rebuilding economically their countries, Iraq, Syria, uh, uh, Iran. Also, perhaps we might be seeing Mr. Ablahian visiting uh, Lebanon, maybe. So this is a direct message to those countries, uh, the United States and the West, that uh, this alliance will remain strong and they, they, will be remain, they will remain working together to fight all the plots and all the pressures and all foreign interventions in this region. And Mustafa, do you see the, uh, these moves that have been uh, taking place so far under the new Raisi administration as a strengthening of the axis of resistance and the significance of that? And what type of response do we think we will be seeing from those traditional adversaries? Well, it's uh, a very good question because, uh, you know, uh, uh, for President uh, Raisi, foreign policy is good if it helps Iranian people's economic welfare. And for that to happen, uh, his prime objective is increasing trade ties with the neighboring states, the regional states. Uh, since he is holding closer views with other branches of power, the judiciary, the parliament, and others, um, he is a more uh, fearful enemy for Israel and those adversaries that are standing against Iran. And at the same time, he's a more powerful president for France. Now, it's up to, uh, you know, uh, uh, countries like Saudi Arabia to decide which category they would like to fall in. Since Mr. Raisi was fast to uh, offer re inauguration or reopening of embassies in Tehran and Riyadh, and there is a reasoning for that. Because, as I said, the prime objective is increasing trade ties with the regional states, for that to happen, the prerequisite is de-escalation of tensions with uh, regional rivals. So in his first press conference, he rushed to offer a reopening of embassies. But unfortunately, the Saudis are very much slow, even slower than the UAE leaders who approached Amir Abdullah Yan in the Baghdad event to uh, make him understand that they realize the new situation that, that's rising in the region. Um, but, but the Saudis are too slow to, to grasp the meaning and the realities uh, 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 in the region, on the okay. way in the region. After using all their hostile actions against Iran and failing, now that Trump, Netanyahu are gone, the U.S. is pulling out. If the nuclear deal is revived, then the Saudis will be marginalized from regional equations further. And as the Yemen war has ruined their economy, I mean, the uh, Saudi economy is going bankrupt, 
now they need and they know that time is not on their side and that they uh, will be much weaker if they want to send a positive response uh, in future. So time is to Iran's benefit and okay. Iran is moving ahead very fast and is steadfast on this road. Thank you both for being with me here on this news review. Uh, Mohammad Ali, press Vice correspondent out of Damascus, and uh, Mustafa Khushchesh, a uh, political analyst out of Tehran. Thank you, viewers, for being with us on another news review.